This lesson is going to look at equivalent fractions. So I'm going to show this to you in two ways, one with a drawing and one with multiplication. Um, so here we go. I'm going to show you. Let's start off with the very simple fraction. Okay. Um, okay, so this one is halves. This one is quarters. Now, if I were to shade in one half, and if I say I shaded in half of this circle here, that would be two quarters. So I'm going to draw a line here to show you why these are equivalent. So we've now broken this into four parts. There's two quarters. So one half is equal to two quarters. And in fractions, we say they are equivalent. Okay. I will do one more example for you. This time I will not use a circle. So I am going to go with quarters again. However, this time I'm going to show you a different denominator. Let's go eighths. Okay. So now let me shade in. I'm going to shade in over here one quarter. I'm going to shade in the exact amount on the next object here. As you can see, there are two. So I will draw it in here, what it looks like, if I were to break this down into eighths. So as you can see, they're, they're equivalent. One quarter is equal to two eighths. Now the my method, I like doing the multiplication method because it just kind of gets to the point right away. I'm not very much of a drawing type learner, so I prefer to see numbers in multiplication. That's just me though, so uh, if you were, you don't need to be like that. Some of us are like this, some of us are not. It doesn't matter as long as we get the desired outcome. When we have one half equal to two quarters, the key here is to look at, say, the denominators. So now with these two denominators, you have to use multiplication to figure out equivalency. 2 multiplied by a number equals 4. Now we know that's multiplying by 2. And in fractions, what you do to the bottom, you need to do to the top. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. The next, you can also multiply this by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. And you can also divide this, or sorry, multiply this by 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 4 is 4. So this can go on and on and on and on. So if I had to give you 2 thirds as my example, multiply numerator and denominator by 2, we get 4 sixths. These are equivalent. If you were to multiply numerator and denominator, say, by 3, 6 ninths. And then the next one would be times 4, 12, and 8. And you would just keep going and going and going. And this is how you can see what the equivalent fractions of each other are. Now, the, um, the reason why this is important is because when you write a fraction, say I were to write a fraction of 9 twelfths, in the fraction world, we don't like it as 9 twelfths because this can be reduced down. And if we want to find an equivalent fraction using multiplication, it makes it larger. The opposite would be to use division to make it smaller. So if you know your multiplication facts, division is very similar to it. Uh, so if I would like to lower this fraction, I have to find a number that these two are both divisible by. And in this case, they're both divisible by 3. So 3 quarters. How do you know you've reduced your fraction down to its lowest terms? Well, you have to find prime numbers. That's one thing. And we know 3 is a prime number. Um, but you, you, you need to know that things cannot be reduced anymore. So if I, if I had to give the example of, say, 20 over 24, okay? Because they're both even numbers, your instinct will say, let's just divide them by 2. And that is a great way to do it. So if I divided both of these numbers by 2, I get 10 
over 12. And then you're looking at it, you're like, wait a minute, they're both still even numbers. And I can divide it by 2 again. And you should. It gives you 5 over 6. Now you have an odd number, you have an even number. But more importantly, 5 is prime and you cannot divide a prime number. So it's 5 over 6. So if we go back to the original question with the new lowest fraction number, you can get from 20 to 5 by dividing by 4. If you need to take these extra steps like this, I 100% encourage it. Do it. It's awesome as long as you get to the point. The more practice you will um, be exposed, like the more practice you get, you will get better at dividing numbers. Okay, I know division is a very scary thing, but there's nothing to worry about. If you know how to divide by two, if you know how to divide by five, uh, divide by three, these are these are um, benchmark numbers. If you can remember these, you, you are better than you think you are. Um, you're actually a lot better than you think you are. You're scared of division. Don't be afraid of division. Uh, do your best. Divide it chunk these numbers into smaller numbers and you you will get the desired results i i promise you you just have to believe in yourself so i hope this video was helpful to you thanks for watching and have a great day